Now, can you imagine thousands of African elephants roaming freely in Germany? Well, this is how the German tabloid Bild pictured it recently, after interviewing Botswana's president. Ugoetsi Masisi suggested he could send 20,000 elephants to Germany, adding he wouldn't take no for an answer. This after Berlin threw its weight behind EU plans to restrict or even ban outright the import of hunting trophies from endangered animals. Botswana says bans like these are condescending and colonialist, pointing to its own wildlife conservation record, the increase of wild animals there, and the importance of tourism, hunting, and trophies to local communities. It's estimated that 90% of African elephants were wiped out since the start of the 20th century, largely due to hunting, the ivory trade, and poaching. As a result, elephants are listed as endangered animals, but not in Botswana, where their numbers have increased to more than 130,000. That's the world's largest elephant's population. Every year, the government issues a limited number of hunting permits, saying this is needed to keep elephant numbers in check and generate income. Joining me now is the President of the Republic of Botswana, His Excellency Mugwetsi Masisi. Mr. President, hello and welcome to DW News Africa. So, just to be clear, you're not really sending 20,000 elephants to Germany, are you? I might well be. <laughs> if the Germans are able to come and collect them, I'm more than happy to facilitate. Why would you say that? Because I want the Germans to feel what we feel, go through what we go through, experience what we do, and be part of the solution to this problem of not having enough, you know, of these um, magnificent species around. Share the burden. <laughs> what exactly are the sacrifices uh, Botswana is going through to keep those elephants? Well, we are the only country in the world that has uh, set aside 40% of our land mass for conservation. That's a massive sacrifice. If you can just think of the opportunity cost of what, uh, you know, that it would be in terms of what other activities could be undertaken on that land mass, um, it should show you what a sacrifice it is. One, two is uh, we we have to protect these animals um, uh, and offer offer them safety and ensure that in times of drought, like we're going through a devastating drought now, we do our best to mobilize our resources to provide water uh, for them. Uh, we have got to ensure that uh, the these animals are as free from a disease burden. So. Uh, we also have got to make sure that um, uh, mm. these uh, animals are enjoyed comfortably and safely by our tourists. Um, and uh, and uh, these are sacrifices. But another sacrifice is that when these animals, particularly elephants in this case, um, overshoot the runway in terms of their population growth rate, they then veer and start grazing and uh, marauding over areas bigger than the geographic space that they've been uh, designated for them. And when they do that, you get into the inevitable human wildlife conflict uh, issue. Mm. I mean, um, you said this, and I quote, this is uh, to Germany, you said this, and I quote, this is no joke, and it is very easy to sit in Berlin and have an opinion about our affairs in Botswana. We are paying the price for preserving these animals for the world. Uh, um, some would argue that was quite a harsh tone. Aren't you breaking with diplomatic conventions and risking a spat with Germany by saying those words? No, 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 it's not. It's not at all. I'm not, I'm not assaulting the German government. I'm not assaulting the German people. I'm talking to a position from our perspective that we feel and experience. And so when these opinions are generated out of discourse, I'm enlivening the debate. Take into consideration where the elephants come from the people that live with them, the governments that manage them. That's all I'm asking. And uh, there's mm. no risk of uh, being candid about um, what we experience. 
Mm. So it was no slight to um, our German friends. Mm. What or how would you rather have wanted Germany to approach this matter? Because it seems to be clear that you're saying that Germany doesn't really have a deep idea about the challenges you're facing with the elephants. And, and it's just sort of speaking, so to speak, out of no experience. How would you want them to deal with this? Well, to get themselves more informed. I mean, even our, uh, the, the local German ambassador here uh, was quite uh, 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 honest in, in admitting that and saying that uh, sometimes uh, these positions are held by people who don't know enough about what we go through. Because she lives here, um, not necessarily among the elephants, but she lives in Botswana. She knows what it is. So I don't think uh, there's been sufficient energy expended on understanding um, mm. the circumstance that we come from and we live mm. in. Germany's position can be argued that they were warning about limiting the import of hunting trophies even further to try to protect the elephants. Once upon a time, Botswana, you know, elephants were quite endangered due to successful conservation efforts. Now, one can argue you have more than enough. Um, so what is the way forward? Are you not concerned that somehow encouraging hunting is going to you know, reduce the elephant's population and bring them back to an endangered species in Botswana? We're not talking about wantum hunting. And besides, who is anybody to come and tell us how to manage them and to manage the hunting when we've been so successful at their conservation, particularly when those who want to prescribe this have no elephants to show? Where are their elephants? And what do they do with the species that they also hunt? How do they manage species that cause them challenges? And what are the numbers that they take out a year? So we, we are asking for consistency and logic. What help then do you need from Germany, the international community, you know, to help Botswana with its elephant overpopulation? I want them to understand the problem. Any way you want to offer a solution, you begin by first understanding the problem, right? And then part of the understanding the problem is hold a logical conversation with the people. You know, I don't think this is so much really about logic more than it is about emotions. But we also need to make sure that our emotions do not undermine our thinking in terms of solutions that we prescribe. And there's consistency in the way we pronounce to the way we act ourselves. And right. if that's a position to be held, i.e. ban trophy hunting and no importation of such trophies, what do you do with the problem because it can only grow in Botswana? Or how do you advise us? Because you've advised us to keep them and not hunt them, how do you advise that we thrive as they thrive? Mm. Mm. So I think it would be nice um, to share with us a bit of your plan. What is Botswana's plan? Because you need a sustainable solution, right? What, what is that plan that you could even get help from Germany and the international community? Well, you know, stop this uh, trade uh, barrier and, and, uh, and stop uh, this uh, um, uh, complex de facto sanctioning of our product. Stop it. Uh, that would be a big help. And to engage in meaningful conversation uh, with ourselves and educate your public about what you do. And um, and, and this, this would really help. But, you know, mm. we can also get into research and development because we are keen to revert to a knowledge-based economy. And part of the research development to deal with this problem, maybe to find a means by which you can, you know, mitigate the population growth uh, in a non-invasive, non-intrusive, non-lethal mm. uh, mean way. So if um, Botswana wanted to, um, based on some of the challenges that you mentioned, is, is it actually feasible? I'm asking this because a lot of people may be wondering if Botswana has so much of the elephants, obviously moving them to Germany is not really 
going to be feasible or possible, and I'm sure you know that. But what about neighboring African countries? Is there a way to somehow spread them across some countries to, to help lessen the, the burden or the pressure on Botswana? That's the most preferred thing to do, to help them spread in the region. That's why we created CASA. But look, if you hold the opinion that is so detrimental to us, I don't think it's impossible to move them to Germany. Come on. If Germany had wanted these very badly, what has Germany not been able to move to Germany? You tell me. There are so many very heavy, bulky things that have been moved. Why could these not be? It all depends on how you value them, right? So don't say impossible, because we live in a, a world where we want to eliminate impossible and make it possible or think it possible. <laughs> okay. So just to be clear, Germany said today that, well, we actually need a couple of elephants. We'll help uh, get it here. You'll be very happy with that. Not a couple, a few thousands, a couple of thousands at the least. Right? <laughs> We're more than ready. Right. My communities are ready. I've been conversing with them. They're all raising their hands. Come and get some from us. Come and get some from us. But, you know, okay. one thing we mustn't sight of, you know, I'm African and we're in Africa. This is a resource. It's a natural resource. It's an endowment. It's heritage. Mm. It's got value. It's not as if I want to wantonly give away a resource. I'm trying to get people to focus on what is a, a, a massive problem for us. Right. Right. Uh, Mr. President, um, before I let you go, uh, you've got elections coming up towards the end of the year. Uh, what's your most pressing issue and what do you wish to achieve? Of course, uh, aside sure, trying to get pressing, yourself reelected. My most pressing, well, the, the motive is not driven so much by getting myself as a person reelected. It's getting my party reelected. That's what's really pressing because it is the bearer, in my view, of policies that are most promising for Botswana. But one of the biggest problems and challenges that we have, and it cuts across parties, is, is employment. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, a youth dividend. We have a uh, 60% of our population are young people. Uh, we've educated them. We've kept them healthy relatively. Um, and uh, they're very aspirational. Uh, they're energized. And it's a structure of the economy, the opportunities in the economy. That's what we need to really open up. And that's why when you um, look at the number of jobs generated by photographic exclusively, even in areas where photographic hunting is not suitable, so, sorry, photographic tourism is not suitable, um, when you look at the opportunities of jobs for jobs in, in, in uh, controlled hunting spaces, there, there are many more, particularly when you put in place industries and uh, of various kinds that would yeah. enhance the value and you develop value chains uh, following hunting, um, you know, and that's what we need uh, uh, help with. And that is a, a major uh, priority for me. Um, we'll always have uh, priorities of water uh, because we are in a drought prone uh, area of, of Southern Africa. Um, mm. And, uh, but jobs, jobs are, are really important. Um, right. So right. As we go to the elections uh, as is customary in October and uh, the, 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 there's nothing unusual in Botswana. Uh, we will have an election, we will have a count, we will have a declaration of a winner, there will be a swearing in, and Botswana continues. Uh, the elephant story remains. Mm. And, and moving forward, how would you want your relationship with, with Germany and, in, and indeed other countries uh, to be like? If, if, you know, looking at the current sort of back and forth between Botswana and Germany, for instance. Our relationship with Germany is not defined by elephants. <laughs> May get that clear. We have very strong bilateral relations, very strong diplomatic relations that uh, you know uh, uh, are focused, uh, uh, premised on uh, on mutual benefit and reciprocity. And so we'd want them to grow, uh, but we want to grow as these relations grow in the same way as we want to grow Germany, because a strong, uh, uh, stable, powerful Germany is a strong, stable, powerful Botswana. But we want. Uh, to start riveting towards uh, a near balance in in, uh, in the global uh, world order. Uh, and so um, how can it be uh, safe for us when some parts of the world are excruciatingly poor and some parts of the world are excruciatingly rich and, and powerful? It's certainly not safe. 
So we want that to be understood, embraced, accepted by Germans as we want by everybody else. So what we want for ourselves is what we want for the Germans. And we'd wish the Germans, what they want for themselves is what they want for us. His Excellency Mugwetsi Masisi, President of the Republic of Botswana. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Have a good day.